Hola amigos! I come to you irritated and annoyed because once again I recorded this video as a live a few weeks or a few days ago and um, the app deleted it before I could save the video. So because I care about you and I'm also stubborn and uh, can't let it go, I'm gonna redo this because I thought it was good info. So, so the topic is tips on public speaking. And um, I had notes in front of me. Oh my goodness, here we go. So I also, sorry, I am just not prepared at all. Um, oh wait. <laughs> Here we go. Sweet. Okay. So tips on public speaking or presenting. I'm going to go through the tips that you all provided, which were really good. Maybe uh, go in deep on, deeper on some of them, add my own little twist, and then uh, it should be, should be a useful video. I'll try to keep it as short as possible. So Jamie said, starting off, she joined a local Toastmasters group. And uh, so she got to frequently present and it was, uh, you know, constructive criticism was encouraged. So Toastmasters is pretty cool. I've actually never been to one. I was planning on going before last year, before the pandemic really hit. And I, I just didn't and I haven't since, but I've heard good things. Um, I've also heard mixed reviews. It really just depends on the meeting and the people at the meeting. So you gotta kind of dig into your own little research, but just, Look up Toastmasters meetings, they're all over the place, and they are just groups of people who, uh, who practice presenting and, and public speaking in front of each other. And the group provides feedback, and, and you can make it, there are, um, depending on the meetings, there are certain unique things like, you know, being creative, telling a story, just getting really comfortable talking in front of people. Um, so that is always an option, and, uh, and it's free. And, you know, maybe if you want to do that with a group of your colleagues or your classmates, make your own little group that you guys, you all get together and, and uh, practice presenting in front of each other, giving each other feedback, doing some like different mock scenarios and things like that, make it kind of fun. But that can be really, really helpful. Um, Copes Grind says, uh, trying to channel the nervous energy of positivity and self-belief. So maybe that's before you go and present, trying to kind of find a quiet place just to calm your nerves, maybe do some deep breathing, just to kind of like center yourself a little bit, and then maybe some positive self-talk um, and some positive imagery, you know, imagining yourself being up there confident and, and things like that. Similar to how we would do before like an athletic event, uh, athletic event or competition. Uh, Theodora says, practicing and making it as interactive as possible. Get some responses, Getting responses from the audience can make you feel more connected to them. That's really good. That, that's a really, really good point. Um, so first of all, practicing. We're going to talk about that more. But getting comfortable with your inflections and, and getting confident in your material will help you exude confidence. You'll be able to be a little bit more free and not so uptight. Um, and then making it as interactive. You know, when you see presenters kind of like, doing a show of hands or having people go around the room, it's as much for the presenter as it is for the audience. Because the more the presenter and the sooner the presenter can interact with the audience, the more they feel connected. And then when the, when the audience interacts with the presenter or interacts with each other, um, it, it just really creates more of a kind of a safe environment for people to open up. And uh, so, you know, at, at weightlifting seminars, clinical athlete seminars, I'll just do something silly in the very, very beginning like, uh, tell us your first name and your favorite food or something like that. So it's real quick, but it's, you know, the more that somebody, the sooner somebody can, can open their mouth and just make sounds in front of a bunch of strangers, the more comfortable they're going to feel, especially for the introverts in the room who, if not nudged in that direction, would probably just kind of like, um, hunker down and, and maybe stay quiet the whole time. So, uh, encourage interaction as soon and as much as possible. Um, Tossi says, find ways to informally discuss the topic in one-on-one -on -one conversations. That's a really interesting uh, suggestion as well and recommendation. I really like that. So if you can informally discuss your topic in your own words, that really shows ownership of the material. 
they always say like um, the real experts can can simplify material, simplify complex material, and any and in a way that anybody can understand. So if you can informally discuss your content with friends, colleagues, family, uh, like your kind of elevator pitch, that that goes a long way in uh, showing your understanding and your comfort with the content. And if you can't do that, if you have to be, kind of be reliant on reading the slides and, and um, you know, using a bunch of jargon, maybe you spend more time trying to in, internalize the information in your own thoughts, in your own words. Um, and that'll really help for times where there's going to be a Q&A and you might have memorized your PowerPoint, but if somebody asks a question, you have to, you know, know enough about the, about the topic to be able to have a dialogue. You're not going to be able to just read off an answer because you don't know what questions are coming. Um, JJ Jurek says, reminding myself that humans are just a collection of atoms floating through space. It calms, it calms my nerves. That's funny. So yeah, just, you know, um, Junior said something similar. Don't put the audience on a pedestal. So they're watching you. It can kind of be unnerving, but like they're humans just like, just like you are. And they probably get nervous public speaking as well. Um, so just, just remember that they're the same as you. They're, they're atoms floating through space or some people make it funny and they say, I just picture, uh, everybody in a, in a funny costume or something like that, just to take the edge off. Um, Amanda says before CSM, so Amanda's a PT and CSM is combined sections meeting. It's the big annual physical therapy conference. And usually when you present there, it's, it's in front of a pretty big group. And she said before CSM, I did a similar warm up to my lifting sessions, squats, uh, bear crawls, side lunges. She said it helped to calm her, her nervous energy. So that's really interesting. Just getting in there and moving a little bit. I, I know people who before they present or before they do content, do something similar. They do like burpees or jumping jacks or pushups, or they take a walk, something like that. Just something to get the blood flowing, get kind of the, the juices pumping and it, it really uh, clears your mind and it gets rid of some of that nervous energy and um, it helps you kind of zone in on, on what you have to do. So uh, thank you, Amanda. That was really good. Sophia says, speak as if you're speaking to yourself. So similar to what Tossie said, um, if you can make the information, you know, how would you teach and convey the information to yourself that would make sense to you? Uh, what questions would you ask yourself and then how would you answer them? So try to um, preemptively prepare for some of the questions that you're going to get and be able to answer those things um, in a conversational way, in a, in a way that would uh, encourage dialogue. So this is a really, really good. Um, whoop, my bad, hold on. Okay, Kelly says, holding something like a pen uh, helps her direct her anxious energy elsewhere. So yeah, you're up there. I, I do it too, it's funny. I think like at the weightlifting certifications, especially during the group breakouts and like the lab, where I'm holding like a PVC pipe or something like that and I'm pointing with it or like cueing with it. Just, I don't even realize that I'm doing it, but it kind of, it does help you feel a little bit more secure. When I'm doing lectures, I'm usually holding a, like a coffee. People make fun of me because sometimes I'll hold the same coffee that I had at like 8 a.m. that I started the meeting with and it's like 4 p.m. and it's the same coffee and I've drank half of it, but it's just like having it in my hand, I don't know, kind of, helps you feel a little bit more calm and comfortable. And I've got like the clicker, the PowerPoint clicker too. So um, that's not for everybody, but but little things like that can kind of help. Um, Zalexi says, slowing down when you're speaking so the words flow better and, make, and making emphasis on key words. So that's really good. If in doubt, slow down. Usually, let's say you time yourself because a lot of times presentations are, you have a time constraint, right? can't just go on forever and so you'll practice your presentation on a timer which is a good idea to make sure that you fill the time appropriately and when you're by yourself you're not as nervous and so you're you're calm you're speaking slowly but you may not even realize that when you get up there you start just zipping through your presentation um, and so for one that can like you have more time at the end than you would have thought and number two you may not actually be getting the, your points across that you want so if in doubt Take a deep breath, slow down, maybe have uh, time points. Like I have, I've done my lectures enough where, especially at seminars, 
where I know at a certain point in the lecture, I want to be, I want to have done in a certain time period. And so I have these kind of blocked off. So I'll kind of check the clock and say, oh, we're right on schedule or I'm a little bit behind or I'm a little bit uh, ahead. I can slow down and maybe take some questions, stuff like that. And I'll go back to the whole practicing thing. Practicing the way that you're kind of going to present is a, is a huge, huge key. It's so, it's a low hanging fruit. And what I mean by that is you finish your presentation, you have an idea of what you want to say, you have your PowerPoint, but then you just, your practice is kind of like a, a very hasty run through. You're like, oh, these slides make sense. I got this. As opposed to maybe even setting up a projector or at least going in presenter mode and recording yourself even and, and going through the presentation in the exact way that you want to go through the audience. And that helps you practice the way that you want to get points across, the flow of your PowerPoint. You may identify, and you probably will, parts that just don't flow well or don't even make sense. Or like, I don't even know why I have that in there or just things that don't work. And you're like, wow, I'm glad I caught that because where else are you gonna catch it? During the presentation. And that's not where you wanna be realizing that a part of your presentation didn't flow well. So it's, it's so invaluable to really go through it um, exactly the way that you plan on presenting it and, uh, and you can fine tune it. And then that way you're more comfortable and you can slow down because you know what slide is coming up next. So you know like the next three slides instead of advancing the slide and then having to remind yourself and reorient yourself to your own presentation. Um, and that was actually a point that Aaron made too. Know your content inside and out. Preparation makes the act so much easier and it's so true. Talking about being calm and interactive with the audience, that's very difficult to do if, you don't, if you're not even comfortable with your own material. So get comfortable with your content, know your presentation, know just inside and out, side to side, up and down, back to front, just all of it. Um, and I'll say this too, practicing, make sure that you don't neglect the end of your presentation. A lot of times we'll practice and we just like, we're super focused and practicing and excited and we just tend to like rush and trail off towards the end and we do that over and over. And we'll say, yeah, practice my presentation like 10 times, but every single time you got about three fourths of the way through and that ending, you just kind of like rush through it because you were getting bored. And then you're not as comfortable with the end because you actually haven't practiced it deliberately like you had in the beginning. Um, it's kind of like for me when I'm learning piano, I actually sometimes learn songs from the end and work backwards. So that way, I'm, as a song goes on, I'm actually getting more and more confident as I go. Um, you don't have to do that exactly for a presentation, but just, just make sure you're putting the same effort into all the beginning to the end and the middle of your presentation practice. Um, Millie says, do more of it. Absolutely. It's like writing, people ask me, what are the most best resources or best ways to learn how to write programming? You gotta write programs. There's, because there's so many ways, there's not any one right way to do it. Doing it gives you the context to then learn what worked, what didn't. So it's, it's, it's like speaking a language. Well, how do, how do I, what's the best way to learn? Drop yourself, immerse yourself in the language. And then when you flounder away, you just, you pick things up, you have context for it. Then you can come back and actually learn grammar rules and those things make sense. But if you just start with grammar rules with no context to the language or culture, it's real hard to learn a language that way. It's the same with presenting. You got to do it. And, and again, find a group that you're more comfortable with maybe. Um, in, if you're in class, if you're a student and you're doing group projects, a lot of times the people that are more comfortable with public speaking will take more of the lead. Take initiative. If that's not you and you're, you're one who would typically hang back and take the smallest part, do the opposite. Take the first part. Go first. Um, first of all, it feels better to get done first anyway, um, but it's a, it's a safer environment you know, to be up there with your colleagues versus uh, with a bunch of strangers. Prescription Strength Bob says, filming myself, taking, um, filming myself talking a lot, writing with clear thinking. Um, again, Filming yourself and hearing yourself speak, as much as we hate that, it's so incredibly useful because you're gonna pick out all the things that you didn't realize you were doing or you're gonna see places that maybe didn't flow well and you're gonna be able to address those. And, and Bob also says open mic stand up, which may be a joke, I mean, that's actually, <laughs> if you can stand up in front of people and make them laugh, complete strangers, you have a pretty good handle and presence being up in front of people. 
Um, okay, moving on, we've got a few more. Again, these are really good. Jim says, confidence and in being correct in his information and presentation. So yeah, again, if you are confident in your material and you, you're really not only confident in presenting it, but confident that it represents truth or represents, you know, as close to fact as possible, that, that obviously helps. So if you're up there just kind of spewing some, some made up stuff, uh, sometimes it can be hard to even get behind your own self in, in that way. Um, Nick says, record yourself speaking, listen back, best way to stop unnecessary likes and ums and uhs and those types of things. All these little quirks that we do that maybe we don't even realize. Um, or saying like, right and like and right, 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 right. It's like, uh, you don't want people playing the game, you know, take a shot every time Quinn says right or whatever. You don't want to be the victim or the, the subject of those games, so pay attention to yourself. Um, let's see here. Okay. I think that's, I think that was it as far as the, the ones that I got. And I pretty much said similar things, uh, taking sales jobs. If you, in the past or, or, uh, you don't have to do this, but something that does help is, is sales. So I, like as a young lad, I sold, uh, Cutco kitchen cutlery, which fantastic product, by the way, I still stand by Cutco as the best out there, but you know, I'm in there selling thousand dollar knife sets or trying to, to families in their own home. Um, talk about, you know, just out of your comfort zone, out of your element, but it was just, um, really, really valuable. I also sold Bass Pro Shop credit cards in Bass Pro, which that was, that job was awesome because I got this massive discount on all my fishing gear, which is just my blew my paycheck on fishing gear the whole time. But talk about, you know, Having somebody sign up for a credit card, yeah, I was that guy. Um, but learning how to take on objections and tell the truth and not be like slimy in your sales, but discovering if they have pain points or if they have problems is, you know, do I, what I have is what I have the solution. And if it is, this is why it's the solution. And we do this as coaches and physical therapists. We are selling our program, our, our value, our expertise all the time. When you're presenting, you are selling the material. You're selling your your presentation. Um, teaching is is a form of selling. If you want people to pay attention and um, buy into what you're saying, and, and then maybe dig into the topic on their own. Otherwise, it's just you're just another presenter that they're going to tune out. Um, so you have to. It's it's engaging in that way. You learn how to how to keep people engaged. <clears throat> um, okay. Now, I wanna talk, I wanna end this by talking about the actual presentation or the PowerPoint. I'm only, I'll use PowerPoint as an example, but whatever platform you use other than your voice and yourself to provide a presentation, the, the PowerPoint shouldn't talk for you. It, it, if you could give your PowerPoint just the slides as a handout, what's the point of having you up there? They don't need you. There's way too much on the PowerPoint. You are the presentation. The person is, is providing the narrative and the content. The, the PowerPoint, the slides are just augmenting you. It's not the other way around. It's not a document. Um, you know, look at, watch TED Talks and, and see some master presenters. And you'll notice if they do have a PowerPoint, the slides, there's a lot of, of white space, meaning there's a lot of just space on the slide. There's maybe an image or a, a you know, a visually appealing graph or a few words, but not a, not a story. They're not reading their slides. Um, they are, have internalized their content so well, the slides just help to augment the story because there's no way somebody can read a bunch of words on a slide and listen to you at the same time. It's gonna be one or the other or neither. It's not gonna be both. Um, and, and slides read like shit anyway. I, I stopped giving, PowerPoint slides away at seminars because I don't have a lot of my slides and I have like, you know, different way, I have different animations to uh, augment kind of the narrative, you know, as I'm clicking through. So the slide wouldn't, it would just be a jumbled mess. I give a handout, an actual document that reads like a document, like an outline of the key points. That's what I provide as a handout. Um, and a, a book 
is really good. This is called Presentation Zen, Simple Ideas on Presenting, Design, and Delivery. This is one of many books, the author is Gar Reynolds, but it was, this is a really good book and, and giving recommendations and tips on, on being kind of a master presenter or just like trying to master the craft of presenting. Um, how to structure your PowerPoint slides, but also just how to, how to present. Really, really good book. Um, wanna make sure I didn't miss anything there. But just, just keep that in mind. You know, you are the presentation. The slides are there to augment you. And just imagine what you think when you are in the audience and somebody clicks on the slide and it's just paragraphs on the slide. Do you, what happens? Do you zone out? Are you like, Bleh. are you actually reading that and listening to the person? And if they're just reading the slide, what's the point of having them there? Um, now that takes work. This is like an ongoing process for me, trying to go back and, and revamp my old PowerPoints where I just, um, where I did the thing, the very things that I'm talking about. It is a work in progress for sure. And it's never, you know, done or perfect, but um, hopefully that was helpful. I'm making, just making sure I didn't miss anything. Um, cool. So see you next time.